Welcome back, y'all. Welcome back to United in Tech podcast number four. Unfortunately, it's your host and only host for this morning, afternoon or evening, depending on where you are in the world, Seb, Seb Luca. And Seb. my name is Sebastian Lucas, so welcome. Seb. We've no Seb. co-host still currently, but that's Seb. fine. We're going to delve into this. Screwdriver. Sorry? Can you pass me a screwdriver, please? Screwdriver. Sure. Thanks, mate. Can you keep going? Sorry. And uh, your co-host, I guess, uh, Luca slash me, Sebastian. That's Lucas. Sebastian Lucas is my name. And welcome to United in Tech podcast number four. So let's get into it. Let's go. I bring you this special bulletin to announce that podcast number four has been scrapped for the time being. Massive, massive, massive drama at the Technus Corner Studios. As you can see, one of our PCs is offline. The gaming, the render station, do a bit of render blender and whatnot is not going to happen anytime soon okay guys it's come to this stage i am extremely frustrated right now uh on the basic diagnosis and let me address you guys a little better and a bit more eye to eye so you can see how stressed out i am and the amount of work that's gone into this build on a continual basis with so many things failing it's just gotten out of hand and it looks like another item's failed. At the very least, it's either a $20 item, a $50 item, or a $445 item. So let's get into it. At the Technus Corner, our salvage recovery mission has begun for X217, our system to my left. And luckily we've got something to record the process occurring so that you guys can come along on this vlog style ride there's going to be some music in between and whatnot there'll be some music while i'm talking in the background dcma approved and some banger dcma approved stuff perhaps in any of the montage -ly fast forwarded bits so that you guys can see just how much effort is going into just such a basic diagnosis so that perhaps uh in the long run you guys appreciate those pc techs and realize sometimes those prices can be justified at a rate of $50 an hour. You know, sometimes you're getting the good end of the stick because four or five hours of work and you might be only charged $150. You know what I mean? Like, but anyway, guys, on a side note, my name is Sub Luca again. Thank you for joining us at the Technus Corner. Let's get stuck into this troubleshooting mission that's just about to begin. So let's go. Alrighty, so I'm going to take you guys through the basics of the parts that we've already gone through this build and the drama that's unfolded just in a quick couple of few diddly daddly paragraphs so that you guys can get a idea of why I am so frustrated currently with this 10900K system that is predominantly all bought from parts from one outlet nothing against them being shady in any way it's i believe it's just really really bad luck in my way but the rma process is going to be so tediously strict and stringent uh on me in the future reference because it's just every you know, item is coming back um with a fault within period of warranty and whatnot to give you guys an idea all right uh, let me pull out some items for you, uh, which I still have on me that we can discuss and showcase uh, because I still haven't RMA those. And I was just trying to wipe my hands clean and go, that's it, you know, I'm done with it. So not to keep you guys waiting any longer, we've got ourselves a Z490 Aorus Master motherboard. That got replaced, or that's the replacement for a Vision z490 creator board that i had originally 
that original board had a LAN, uh, Intel LAN port uh, that was known to be faulty version one. That's why it's version two of this now. Uh, go, so I would only have Wi-Fi. That's a no-no. Uh, so as a result, I had to replace. They did not have them anymore in stock. Uh, that wasn't a special price. I had to spend out and fork out about 100 extra fifty for the Z490 or its master. I thought it was a safe bet, um, even though the LAN port's technically the same. It was. No, it's not. It actually, by a figure eight process, it will not stay in 8x8. I got some weird ass BIOS on it, for God's sake. Um, I managed to flash the right BIOS on it to it, and since then, it's also been upgraded to the latest BIOS. But bio figuration cannot occur in 8x8 state. I don't understand what's going on. My Z390 board over there, on the other hand, no problems whatsoever doing that sort of a task, okay? So, that's one thing, okay? 10900K, that's why I've got a 10900K in this system, okay? And originally, it was meant to be 5950X, that chip came dead on arrival. That was replacing the 3900XT chip that died, okay? Even with disclaimers aside, no overclocking has caused degradation to any chips and or my fault user error has occurred. This has been done meticulously. Even the 3900XT was undervolted and completely in safe parameters that otherwise would dictate the fact that it should never have died. One day they died. Turned out MSI B550 motherboard, second pin on it, second subdued supplementary power. When you plug it in, it kills a chip instantly. Now, we've got a 10900K system in the Z490 Aura's Master. All right, and start off things, I thought, well, I'll, I'll make the best out of a situation for cooling purposes. I wasn't gonna use a Dark Rock Pro 4 for very long. Um, I would get something that was going to be substantially make me happy. As a result, um, I had a little bit left over because um, of the change exchange rate for the 5950X as opposed to the 10900K at the time, that was a little less. The 11 series was out. I wasn't gonna go there, guys. 12 series, that's another story, different platform altogether, okay? So I got the 10900K, last of our iconic era uh, of a CPU, pushed to its limits, notoriously hot. We got the Master Liquid ML360 Sub-Zero cooler, okay, guys? Now, this is a tech cooler. It's like a refrigerator for your CPU, and God damn it, did it work great until it stopped working. That was $540, by the way. Uh, so that hasn't been RMA yet. It's got a five year warranty on it. Um, you know, it's not gonna be an instant, uh, instant changeover. So I'm like, if I'm gonna decide, I'm gonna decide, but I have to get something to cool this beast. This 10900K X217 is his name, okay? And he is a part of the family now. Now we have to get this situation rectified to cut a long story short and to cut to the chase. Um, we got the NZXT Kraken Z73 AIO all-in-one liquid 360 mil cooler was working wonders. Connected up to a old NZXT hub, all right? Connected up to a thermal take USB 2.0 splitter, all right? And in the cam monitoring software, I noticed uh, after a short render, what render was it? Well, guess what? That the special effects I did for the first time in my life, I'm just learning. So don't be judge of the stuff at the start. That was meant to be for podcast four of United in Tech. Today we would have been, but we're united in tech through my troubleshooting steps that I'm going to partake in. You guys can come for a ride and see how, how it works, how it gets done. I've already isolated it to one, two, or three items. The third item is not a option, okay? The AIO has to work. It could be the thermal take hub and or the uh, NZXT hub. NZXT hub, about $50, thermal take, uh, USB 2.0 hub, probably about $30 now, and or the cooler, how much? $445 Australian dollars, okay guys? <sighs> So I noticed this because of the cam software as well. So it didn't, it, when it spiked up in temperatures for the, uh, the fan profiles are set to do it justice and I hear it go up and down as the load gets put on the CPU and there was just quiet. It was just quiet. 
straight away I go into CAM software to analyze what exactly is going on. It specifies no, no cooling, no compatible cooling device is available. That's regarding all the fan controls and whatnot and no lighting because I've got NZXT lighting throughout the case that have been documented in the last few videos I've been doing. None of that is available as well. But there is lights, they're white. The CPU cooler has the default now after I restarted the system on a hard cold restart with the power switch being turned off. Instead of my GIF, it has a default CPU temp there. Okay, so there is power essentially but there is no control leads me down the strap that it'll be a USB 2.0 connection of some sort faulty there faulty on the thermal take faulty on the hub coming out um, not too sure and or perhaps the head on the motherboard itself is somehow in disarray okay but this all occurred this PC was not even used today it was running Schmitten it all occurred and the only difference regarding the PC itself is about three updates including an optional cumulative Windows update that Windows decided to press on me and do without my bidding okay um, I try to re revoke those updates two out of the three updates could be revoked then the ones before that no it's not letting you restarting rebooting cutting the updates off try to fix uh, what, it, what essentially it does is in device manager I see a device, a USB device, that is got a error, error 43, and it is failing to essentially be read and to read properly for some reason. I try to update those drivers there manually and whatnot. I, tr I tried um, uh, disabling it. That's why I did the cold boot and everything to re-enable. That's where I sensed I got, I got lightage essentially. I got default lightage. So guys, I know that was a bit of a rant to handle. We're gonna get into dissecting this PC now. And yeah, we have to pull her apart or pull him apart, X217. Thank God we got M to document this stuff, M triple eight. All right, triple eights for good luck, but X217 should have been feeling like heaven by now. And it's just really, really unfortunate the luck I'm having guys. Uh, I, I spent all my money into this stuff. I can't afford this stuff and I was, I was very blessed to manage to have accumulated enough uh, money to get this stuff over a period of time. It's just getting drastically scary and annoying. If I was the type and I could deal with the RMA process and it was all above board, which it should be, I'll be getting my money back, I'll be getting this, I'll be getting that, I'll refund the company with that. Um, and you know i could potentially be upgrading my pc continuously to the next thing for an extra two three hundred bucks and just get the next gen stuff you know with that cash back but what i wanted to stop doing was getting rid of old pc parts i want to keep them for documentation sake for your sake for tenor sake for the fact that in years to come i want to compare i want to compare apples and oranges i want to see the differences i want to see them with my own eyes and i want you guys to experience that from me as well that's how passionate i am about tech okay and innovation is great but we can't get innovation without moving and pressing forward from the past guys and we can't forget about our past otherwise innovation may stagnate for another 10 or so years without competition in this place as well okay so let us change the camera view i'm going to dull down this banger of a song um dc may prove guys so you know forgive but we will put on some other tracks that i found while we start fast forwarding it and every now and then i'll chime in with a, a little extra bit of information as to what i'm doing and how i'm doing it but that's pretty much going to be the gist of it and the way i'm going to troubleshoot it is we're going to try to see how we go good friday y'all it's good friday bless jesus bless bless jesus okay unfortunately we may have a fatality on our hands here that we're trying to mitigate and stop from occurring it was never necessary it should never have have to have happened okay and it's unfortunate that this shouldn't be happening to me as well Comatically speaking i think i am borderline one with the universe at times and i you know for things I've done wrong in my past, I've definitely dealt with it with a stern hand, be it the gods at play. But, you know, 
religion and any politics aside, it's therapeutic generally working on computers for me, but it never is when it's your own computer, guys. For, per, for people like myself, generally speaking, it's the most stressful, annoying thing, especially when all it is is complete and utter trouble. Do you still learn something? Yes, you do. And you get stronger and wiser in your repertoire and your abilities. But, you know, it's it's Friday, good Friday. It's public holiday, public holiday, public holiday, all the way to Tuesday. By the time I get down to Tuesday, I need to talk to them, get sort of maybe another two, one or two days, so I won't have that. I've got like $85 in my bank account, guys. I hope it's the cheaper alternative. And I still need to get vape liquid and stuff. And, you know, anyway, let's get cracking, guys. I apologize if this is a bit long-winded. I might shorten some last parts out. That's why you may have gotten to here without hearing the full story and or thanks for joining me at the Techno's Corner, guys. I apologize, Podcast 4 has been delayed. I appreciate all the likes and all support that has been shown. Very much so, guys. I'm very humbled. I wish to grow and without you, it won't happen. You know that and we know that. So let's continue forward and let's get this PC diagnosed at the very least. Maybe even working if we're lucky. It could be something that's a little bit janky janky, but I'm not that optimistic today. And this may be a period of a few days that you guys actually receive this video from me that you're watching in one hit currently right now. Okay, so enough stalling, let's go. So bottom left corner, uh, you'll see X now straight over there and um, i've already got the uh side panel window glass off it's it's tint it's it's glass panels on both sides it's a h500m cooler master case decent case it was um got it a couple of years after the date of its release so one of those panels we've got we'll pop it in a safe place have to always watch out even linus sebastian misplaces these steps on them and breaks them almost every single time with miraculous saves um, upon his end, frankly. Anyway, so first things first, we're gonna switch her off. She's got a custom top side for better exhaust. Off she goes. Ground ourselves, um, even though we're doing the opposite. And unplug, but before we unplug, I'm gonna grab myself a handy dandy Handy dandy. I don't really know what you guys can see cable management. Just wait until you see the bombshell that is behind these panels. Impossible to get in. Culprits that we're looking at today are our Thermaltake USB 2.0 hub slash uh, additional port extender and whatnot. Okay, and it's also got USB ports that you can plug extra stuff in to on the back side if you're interested. Um, anyway, that and or the NZXT okay, hub for the RGB and the fans per se, which are connected up to this specifically, is the cooler, which had to be mounted uh, with the exhaust fans literally pulling through the case because even though this is a quite a large case uh, not enough space with the motherboard and the BRM uh, slash heat sinks and whatnot um, chunky chunky Aura's Master board we got now this has also had a very fresh installation of Windows uh, 10 on it surprisingly Next, I'm just doing my best, even though I'm so stressed out. Everything just feels like a test. 1000 watt platinum power supply. That's another issue that I might, there might be an issue with the, plat, with the power supply as well, by the way, people. Um, I shit you not. Now, what I'm going to have to do is essentially unplug everything from NZXT hub, okay? And not run the RGB subsequently. The fans themselves will be plugged into headers on the motherboard. The 
AIO pump will be plugged into the optional CPU optional slash AIO uh, designated header. If it's not all of them, it will be definitely one of them in this on, on this motherboard specifically. And then we will establish whether the perhaps the USB 2.0 cable from the AIO cooler might be faulty because we'll plug it direct into one of the USB 2.0 headers on the motherboard directly rather than through the thermal take hub. That'll start narrowing things down. If that works well, schmitten, I'll have something in the meantime that won't be as bling 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 until everything gets rectified and we work out whether it's the NZXT hub itself, uh, the fan and RGB hub and or the thermal tape USB 2.0 extension and USB extender that's on the back side of it. So as you guys can see, so yeah, unfortunately we have to delve in to, to get this essentially firing. We're going to have to dismount the vertical mounted GPU to get into those USB headers. We're going to have to open this up. You guys are going to see what looks like pretty cable management is really poor form on Cooler Master's part because you have to literally to get it like this, you have to push everything into sections and there's so much mess there. You guys will see how much cable I'm dealing with and I've done the best I can on this build. I don't ever have these nightmares with other people's computers. It just seems to be my own go figure. I've had to uh, take my cap off because we're going to be getting sweaty, sweaty as I tackle X Tri Fi or X217 tonight. That I feel so depressed when I can't seem to get out. But something deep inside won't let me quit. I swear that I'm inspired by all this. Okay, so now mess number two, guys. Have a look. Yikey. So I'll give you guys a better view. If you guys can see that. Look at that. All that cabling. And it's tucked all in underneath there and everything. You know, there's <laughs> modular, modular power supply as well. So I only got the cables I need, pretty much all of them. Now the problem with the NZXT RGB for example as opposed to the fans which I can put into the fan headers if I've got enough, uh, enough of them available is I can't put them into the RGB loop. They look like they are 12 volt or 5 pin. I can't remember if it's 3 or 4 but it's the opposite of that and it's a proprietary pin. That's why we've got the NZXT hub as a requirement for that. The exhaust fan which is a 140 millimeter a air RGB2 uh, NZXT fan and if we had any there is a chance that I can connect one of the channels oh Christ it could be the AIO now because one of the channels is connected to the hub the other is connected to the link on the AIO itself because the AIO the NZXT Z Kraken Z73 acts as a controller as well for a set amount of lights, which originally was meant to be, if you get, say, the ARGB Predator, I believe, uh, RGB monstrosity of the Z73 version, which is even more expensive than this one. But because I have to have them in an exhaust fashion pulling up, you would have never seen it on the inside of the case. It'd be actually top side and it's clear as well. So it'd be beaming on top of the ceiling half the time and stuffing up any ambience, especially if I had to leave it on in the middle of the night or something, you know. I will be sleeping at what would feel like a carnival or a circus, people. <laughs> by thirst i'm inspired by worth i desire your worst so you can just hide while i work i ain't tired you first i'll write a second third verse about the lies you go disperse you never did sh i know it hurts but something deep inside won't let me quit i swear that i'm inspired by all this shit. tell me that i can't and i won't that's what guides me the most your lies i'll do what i want <laughs>
See, there's an excavated case essentially. There's also a couple of two SSDs in there. There's all decked out in NVMEs underneath here. Plus, we've got an extra one that's been touched in here. Um, four SATA ports out of the six taken, um, and two of them can't be utilized because of the NVME that we drop in here as well. So, uh, just that color so that when I can, I can identify the spots as soon as I get in, essentially next time wherever they are in this bird's nest bird's nest spaghetti central of uh cabling that is my great cable manager you can't do anything about it you can't do it if you tie them into ties and knots you can see you can't put the panels on frankly i like it's it's insane i don't ever slow up no i don't take sh i got no love for the fakeness if you want to play tough I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement Everything I do, so instinctive and so passionate Every word I move, so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented it Being negative when you should be getting after it I got facts over facts over tracks This and that, spitting slow, spitting fast On a side note, this uh, case actually caught on fire once And I almost lost the Cooler Master control hub There for the front fans and whatnot on RGB Um... Yeah, we were of course a uh, power supply that was literally uh, about a month out of its warranty, um, old school 850 watt, and 
I'll tell you what, there was a little hole on the back side here, which I saw the fire, I smelt the formaldehyde, uh, sweet, sweet smell of burning electronics. And I blew into the fire to put it out, of course, um, but unknowingly, knowingly, knowing that it's going to actually flare the fire up further still, luckily not because it was burning plastic and electronics essentially so it died it out very quickly that's the only way there's only lifeline i had i could not douse the water all over it you know i turned it off straight away i put it on the ground over there you know 45 kilos worth of machine you know just instantaneously was like a feather for me as i was trying to but it got some damage here on the pcb but it hasn't damaged the functionality Luckily, very, very lucky. I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last, but I don't know if that can erase all the past and the pettiness of reflection of the empty. So, if you guys are chilling out with me at the uh, Technus Corner today, unfortunately, podcast number four of United in Tech has been delayed. Hit that like button, it helps lots with the algorithm of the YouTube uh, nation. And please subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Plenty of Technus Corner uh, bringing out your Technus stuff. We do tech stuff here. Let's press on. Let's, let's tidy this up. Let's get it rolling. Let's test it out. And then we'll close it up and we'll sum up exactly what part is faulty. We're hoping it's not the actual AIO itself. Though. That'll be the worst, thing, worst case scenario. Alrighty, let's take this case to the next level. Going to the next level. It's hilarious, you think you're with my time, you're delirious, mysterious, because you are behind a fake exterior, inferior, you know I'll always be a bit superior, get off of me, this ain't no humble brag, I want you to hear words, you can say them back, I want you to feel free from the chains at last, and to believe in what you got, it was built to last, yeah. Now that I've been put through, I never got anyone's help, I had to do it all myself. Sweet Jesus, thank you, and also the tech gods, please, let us at least be fixed in this regards. Let's go. We apologize for the interruption to your regular viewing. We have an important announcement to make.
I'm gonna have to do a hard restart one more time, by the way. Got an 04, and the restart will fix it. 27 degrees, there was just a flicker of some, and it's gone out, and the GIFs come up. I think it's, it's initiated the profiles correctly. But um, I'm going to restart just for good measure once. And uh, then we're going to have to go into the BIOS. I'm going to restart one time real quickly. Just it'll clear a code, which I, an error code I have. Um, signifies the way it was booted up and all from what it started on. So we're going to restart that. Then after that, I'll then go into the BIOS per se um, and fix the fan, fan curvature. The fans are all working, which is good to see. All out. Give it a second to uh, warm up again. Hello, Mr. X. So we've got some monitoring software over here to our right. I'll pop it over here for the time being. And we'll just see what's going on down over here. Eject NZXT Kraken Z device. So the Kraken Z device is being detected. It wasn't being detected before, frankly. So that's that's a that's a good thing. Um, if we open up, I'm just going to see the uh, Adrenaline software for the AMD graphics card. It is on its global tuning profile, which is what I like to see. Assertive fan profile. I've also just got an Apex Legends and a Nice Hash one. If I ever have a chance of using it. Power limit, everything's fine. So we're gonna turn that out. It hasn't addressed it as a outage because it reverts everything back to default. So we'll close that. And now crossing our fingers, we're gonna get some additional information from here. So cooling wise, we've got liquid, GPU, CPU, crack and pipe pumping away the way it should be. Uh, crack and Z3 pump. And the Kraken Z3 fans, which is a three on the top side. So that is great. Now on a custom level, the pump is set up the way I want it to be. It's really one thing or another anyway. And the fans on the other hand, Kraken Z3 fans are set up in a way which is, you know, positioned in sections that it tends to uh, stay in regarding so they're not going up and down at, at those points but then when it rises it rises assertively and always just below max surprisingly i don't know why i've got it at 100 percent it should be about 98 percent then but i want it essentially blaring when it's at those temperatures to maintain and get that temperature down as much as possible prefer to replace the fan then you know the cpu essentially uh, lighting wise, let's double check what's going on over here. So system specs, if you guys want to have a look, it's an AMD Radeon RX 6900 XT. We know that Intel Core i9 10900K, codename Comet Lake, default clock speed of a 3700 megahertz, current clock speed uh, 5000 megahertz. Intel, the manufacturer, socket 1200 LGA, a TDP of 125. We got some 3000 DDR4 memory, um, only 32 gigabytes in X217 at the moment, I could flip it for 64, but that 3000 is well binned G skill memory that's actually running at 3200 uh, all of it, uh, which is really, really nice and uh, in line with this PC per se. Storage on the other hand, uh, it looks like we're missing all our storage, unless it's just, it's just counting the boot drive essentially. Uh, it looks like we might be missing all our storage, so we're going to find that out in a second as well. But piece of resistance, I'm just going to double check lighting, LCD, the GIF is active. Um, strip version 2. Okay, so we'll go to cooling, we'll go to PC monitoring, cooling here. So the cam software is pretty robust now and decent. Should be able to close it and it shall go minimize. Now that we've got that done, we're going to do a quick run of, uh, so I want to set up a couple of things. I want to set up the exhaust fans and the intake fans uh, regarding, I'll probably say GPU temperature for the exhaust and intake perhaps for the 
CPU temperature per se. So that's what we're going to do next. So you guys ain't gonna get a chance to see what's happening in the uh, BIOS because the summer is in the capture card can't capture it. It annoys the hell out of me. So before we do that, I'm just gonna see how it operates in general under a Cinebench R23 run. Okay, nothing special. We're not expecting high, high uh, scores. It's not overclocked per se uh, on any specific um, meaningful level. Uh, that's what the that's what the tech cooler was designed for, the ML360 Sub-Zero cooler. Unfortunately, that's broken and we, we might RMA that with one when we take off, when we take back whatever hub is actually damaged. Well, I'm just gonna go on to quickly device manager. This drives all seem to be there. Security devices, we've got our trusted platform module 2.0, uh, NZXC Kraken Z device, excellent. And it looks like we've fixed that issue with the USB problem. Oh, so I'm, I'm being pretty sure one of those hubs has gone, probably the USB hub, I mean the thermal tape. And all the uh, USB connection from the NZXT uh, hub to the thermal tape, that sector there, perhaps still. So we've got that cleared. I'm just gonna double check actual storage devices physically. Looks like our RAID arrays are all active. We've got three of them set up, essentially. The boot just off a one terabyte Western Digital SN750 Black Gen 3. Let's restart, back in a moment, guys. Temperature's a bit toasty, should bring it down a little bit. We'll move that over here for a second. We'll open up. We're just gonna see uh, if the NZXT software is trumping it, essentially. We'll probably get away with disabling this, essentially, now, if need be, if we'd like to. Just gonna quickly test out the RGB. So I'm just opening up my additional software on the side uh, panel, which is Voice Meter Banana, which I use as well. Get it active, and we'll just do a YouTube clip. So quick YouTube clip. The Technus Corner people, hit that like and I'll subscribe button. We got it back to a future PC build where we had to transplant it to the way it was. And our OP budget gaming PC, best $1,500 Australian build that you can get you can get your money's worth with. Definitely worthwhile checking out those. As well as uh, most recently PC Master Race, FB Marketplace, uh, Season 2, Episode 2 I believe. So that's full of a lot of jiffies and that takes me a little bit to warm up but it's the uh, Brisbane Special Gaming Bonanza. And the Brisbane market for Brisbane scene for used PC parts and used PC computers and game computers is a lot more prevalent, frankly, than currently it is in Melbourne. It's really dry and it's disgusting. Some of the prices are just ludicrous, frankly. And also don't forget to subscribe to United in Tech podcast. Unfortunately, podcast for today been delayed uh, probably for another day or so. There's some cool information that may be out of date now. Uh, I'll see if I can get some other juicy information to replace that uh, if it's too late to uh, execute with that info uh, confidential for the time being. But let us quickly see for the post on last episode yeah, so slash 1500 Australian dollar Uber PC budget PC entry level. We are essentially pulling it apart to get the AIO RMA and under warranty. The bad fan is definitely not and lit. And we shall hopefully build it in a future date. Uh, so, gentlemen, colors so are a little bit astray. Play each under his belt, pertaining to the gang each he is into. With that being said, we are pulling it apart and putting back together the 8th gen, I believe i7 it was, into the case in the net. So, what I will do is being pedantic. NZXC Kraken AZ AR3 cooler. What we're going to do is just go into lighting over here. So we're going to change it to a blue that's slightly custom and slightly lighter. Close that. Now I'm just going to double check those colors for Next time. Hour so, so enjoy the music, guys, in the montage and let's hope we can get it up and running and there's no issues with the build per se so the gentleman can pick it up in the next hour or so so let's go oh. 
already. And with that being said, guys, Technus Corner is about to sign out. We're just going to do a Cinebench R23 run. So I'll get the uh, HW Monitoring Information Mantra Pro. I got it the Pro because that's what you know. I got the dark version, yo. I've, I've paid for this software. Just monitor a couple of things. Uh, I could definitely down clock the voltages on this, frankly. Um, set in default, but we're just going to see how it operates. And I just want a clean, smooth run. I want to hear those fans ramp up just that little bit that will be nice and schmitten so where did we put Cinebench R23 on the C drive uh, straight off it I'm gonna open up that I will uh, move this software to the side here for a second and I'll move this to the side here we will dedicate this to full screen essentially and maximum test duration is off start multi-core test did it save our last one? No, it didn't save it. Um, we're just on 16,000 essentially. So let's see how this goes with the fan profiles as well. It is getting stronger. Fans definitely ramping up. It's only 55% CPU low for some reason being rude. 76 degrees. So it's dropped it to ABX load of uh, 49, um, 4900. So it's ABX set to one less on the zero I might drop that further still for rendering purposes I'm just trying to get the suction and the feeling of this is it actually going higher you know it seems like the temperatures are holding lower than what they were before by at least two or three degrees at the very least not enough time to saturate but our score on the other hand was 49.59 was almost a thousand less than what we had before can you believe? Because we were just at, we were at 15.95 before, 15.96. Uh, maybe some additional software we're running. Uh, package power temperatures, uh, draw wise, you guys can see that we're hitting uh, 240 watts there on the CPU. That's pretty goddamn killer. You know, GPU at the moment has only hit, it's only hit 32 watts so far. That's something else that we can test out, but that's that's some massive power draws that were occurring there, frankly. But temperature-wise, it wasn't always as accurate as it should be. Package temperatures, we hit an 83 degrees. And yeah, look, voltages on the other hand, I could probably drop them under this level to about 1.35 maximum and even less. So this probably was slightly overzealous the ASUS board on default everything else seems to be fine in that regards the fan profiles I've, I felt like I needed them to be a bit stronger still CPU utilization was 100% across the board I'd like to see what we get again essentially I don't push the system for no reason if everything's fine everything's fine so GPU test wise a good GPU test now will be since we know that that's running, I'm going to surprisingly hit nice hash. Big button. That flicker was the profile becoming activated, um, and that's the profile for overclocking, undervolting, and making it as potent as we can regarding the hash rate, using as little power as we possibly can as well. A few other reasons that if you guys want to know a bit more, you can watch some of my mining videos. I explain stuff in the eyes of a PC, essentially like specialist to an M degree and proper etiquette and that i was doing a mining video but that went haywire um, on how to build a mining rig i wish i got that up um, i had to concentrate on getting that rig up um, rather than make a video for you all i wish next time if the, if the luxury permits then i will show that but it's really mining's a bit dead at the moment frankly i wouldn't it's a bit late to get into it i sort of want to feel the temperature won't go up much from 37 degrees see it's at a low to about realistically 44 45 but that's not the hot spot you have to remember the hot spots about 20 degrees hotter than that and the hot spot for nvidia cards is 10 degrees less than it is for the amd counterparts currently um, they're a little bit more sensitive uh, those hot spots so it's something to be vigilant of uh, if you get anywhere near 85 you want to be worrying about permanent degradation occurring and stuff starting to occur okay y'all so that's been a ride through essentially uh we've established that i've managed to get vaping oil all over myself right at the end 
I swear to God, it's either that or thermal paste. I'm like, oh my God, look at that. Oh my God. We've established that it's either the NZXT hub, the USB connection itself, uh, a little bit flimsy and all that was then going to the thermal tape connection just there and that was going to the center one specifically maybe not being red and or this hub itself going fault t okay so that's another thing that we're going to have to look into because uh, i'm going to go into warranty and get one of these replaced and then at the same time pull out my intel cooler and go yeah guys all of this this was bought through one of their systems this was bought at score tech five dollars or six dollars more than up other price elsewhere i just you know at that stage that's what it was um and so was essentially the intel ml ml360 sub zero cooler tech the refrigerator so i'll be like $20 and I'll be like, yeah, all right, you're going to have to wait, blah, 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 and this please as well. Can I get my $549 back, please, that I paid for it? Well, we've got some over here. Do you want it? Yes, I will grab it for later on down the track or a refund and it'll go into the kitty. You can leave it on my account. Thank you very much. But luckily, we don't have to fix this AIO because this is like the one of the better AIOs for it. It's not like there's an alternative that will be much better for this cpu pairing of the 10900k that tends to overheat and is pushing 10 cores and 20 threads 10 big cores and 20 massive threads people anyway my name is seb luca thanks for joining us at the tech corner podcast number four of united in tech subscribe to both channels if you haven't guys we'll be out in the next day and a half or so and again thank you for joining us peace out y'all